morning all. I am Andrea Joseph. I am QHC Faculty in Sexual Reproduction Subject. Today, let's discuss about the topic Schindler's Rebound Hammer Test. Schindler's Rebound Hammer is used to find surface hardness of concrete. Uh, this hammer is developed by a Swiss engineer, Schindler's Ernst, in 1948, and it's based on the principle that the rebound of an elastic mass depends on the surface against which it strikes. Now, let's come to the instrument of this uh, rebound hammer. This rebound hammer mainly consists of an outer body, a plunger rod, a hammer mass, and a main spring. There will be a latching mechanism which holds the hammer mass and plunger together. And there will be an arbitrary scale, marked from 10 to 100, and it consists of a sliding rider in order to find the rebound number from this instrument. There will be a locking mechanism, mechanism so that we can lock the slider, slider, right, sliding rider after the rebound of this hammer. And now coming to the procedure. First of all, we have to push the hammer hard against the surface. This causes the outer body to move away from the concrete surface. And then latching mechanism latches the plunger rod and hammer mass within the equipment together. Then the plunger is held perpendicular to the surface and the body is again pushed towards the concrete surface. This movement extends a spring holding the mass to the body. When the maximum extension of the spring reaches, this latch releases and the hammer mass will be pulled towards the plunger rod by the spring. Thus, the, this movement causes the hammer mass to rebound because the plunger rod is pushed hard against the surface. And uh, during this rebound movement of this plunger rod, the sliding rider also moves along with the plunger, along with the hammer mass. And this uh, sliding rider stops at the maximum distance of the rebound of this hammer mass. And at that particular point, we get the rebound number after locking this, using this locking mechanism. And using this rebound number, we can move came to know about the compressive strength as well as the quality of concrete from the calibration charts provided. The calibration chart is also given by, along with this equipment by the manufacturers itself. Its priorities consist of pure compressive strength and exact is consist of the rebound number. There will be different curves corresponding to the position of this hammer. For that, let's know how, what, which are the positions in which we can use this hammer. Hammer can be used in horizontal position, vertically upward position, as well as vertically downward position. This horizontal position is the normal position and it, and it is not affected by the effect of gravity. But vertical posi position will be affected by the effect of gravity during the rebound of this hammer mass. Therefore, we have to give a positive as well as negative value for this reason. The upward position is taken as positive and this downward position is taken as negative. And there are two more positions, slanting position. Slanting means plus 45 degree and minus 45 degree. Therefore, there are five positions. Zero degree, that's normal position. Then plus 90 degree, plus 45 degree. And downward positions, minus 45 degree and minus 90 degree. And you see this, there are different curves are provided in this calibration chart. So, from this graph, there are five curves corresponding to the five different positions. Plus 90 degree minus 90 degree, plus 45 degree, minus 45 degree, and 0 degree. And the rebound number obtained from the instrument, we can get the compressive strength value corresponding to the curve as per the position. Thus, we get the compressive strength. And there will be a calibration chart which gives the quality of concrete corresponding to the rebound number. If rebound number is greater than 40, we can say that the, uh, the concrete is having a good quality. Otherwise, if it is less than 20, we can say that concrete is of poor quality. This is how we can correlate compressive strength as well as quality of concrete to the rebound number. Thus, we get the compressive strength from the graph itself and then we can get the quality of concrete from the chart provided. It consists of uh, the rebound number and the quality of concrete. That is, if the rebound number is less than 20 degree, we can say that concrete is of very poor quality. And if it is greater than 40, we can say that concrete is of very good quality. Thus, we get the compressive strength as well as quality of concrete using this experiment. This experiment is very simple and easy to be done, either in the laboratory or in the work site. And 
at the same time it has some limitations that is this experiment can be done only on smooth surfaces and also it will, the values got affected by the age of the specimen, rigidity of the specimen, carbonation and some other factors like moisture content, type of cement, type of aggregate etc. All these factors should be taken into consideration while using this experiment and doing the test for finding the hardness of the concrete. And, uh, thank you.